Welcome back to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Cataclysm Crew, issue 17, Youth is Wasted on the Young. On the cover, we see the team as babies, being placed in a pack and play by familiar faces. Vixen carries Rascal King, Traceless carries Machina, and the Custodian carries Blue Samurai. Baby Flyby is already in there, giving her crying teammates an exasperated look. We turn the page and our story begins. Lucy, Pink Cloud has just left the house and Calvin is like getting cookies out. Here, Lucy, I got you a cookie. Are we in the kitchen? You're in the kitchen, yeah. Are both of my hands free? Yep. Cool. Uh, hey, Calvin, why don't you hold on to that cookie for me? I'm going to go get a glass of milk to go along with it. And I do that. Cool, there's milk in the fridge. You can do that. Great, I'm going to get a glass of milk. I'll be like, here, hey, Calvin, you should have a glass of milk. And then I'm just going to throw the ice cold milk on him in an attempt to snap him out of it. Excellent. Um, I'm going to call that a defend roll to see if you can like, I'll let you choose. That can either be a defend or a provoke. Either you're provoking him to do what you want, which is to snap out of it. Or you're trying to defend him and break him out of this like spell. Let's call it a defend. Okay, go ahead and roll plus savior. Well, shit. All right, so that was a four. So mark potential. You throw milk on his face and he wipes it off in a very like Calvin manner. Like it's very like that is how he reacts when there's misfortune. Um, Very like gawky and a little bit awkward. And then he looks up at you and his eyes are just like glazed over with his like pink fog. And he's like, you really shouldn't have done that. And then he takes the cookie jar and just like swings it at the side of your head. Also, for the record, that potential filled up my bar. Great. Do you have, um, and do you know what you're going to take as your advancement? Or are you going to look at it and come back? I'm going to take another Janus move called Game Face. When you commit yourself to save someone to defeat a terrible enemy, mark a condition and take plus one ongoing to all rules in direct pursuit of that goal. Excellent. So you got Which I take- figure might come in useful now. I very much might. He is currently swinging that cookie jar at the side of your head. What do you want to do? I'm going to try to duck out of the way. Cool. You've got your exceptional mobility also. You can easily duck out of the way. And the cookie jar just like hits the fridge and shatters. And he's like, oh dear, I made a mess. I should clean that up. And he like leans down and picks up a piece of the like ceramic. And then he like slashes it at you. I'd say if I'm down on the ground having ducked out of the way, I'm going to try to swipe his feet out from under him to see if like basically like doing trying every like classic snap of out of it we've tried with cold water now we're gonna try like blunt force cool i'm gonna say directly engage a threat for that one so go ahead and roll plus danger how was that better (laughs) all right so that was a nine so on a seven to nine pick one i would say if you're trying to like break him out of it you could take something from them and like take the spell off of him yeah that's what i would like to do cool he hits the ground as you sweep the leg And then you hear this groan, and he's like, oh, what happened? Why am I covered in milk? Are you okay? He, like, sits up, and he's rubbing the back of his head, and he's like, ow. Do you know who your aunt is? Uh, yeah, she's Marsha Merrill. Is that all you know about her? Um, yeah. At that point, I'm going to hand him a wet paper towel so he can try to, like, clean himself off from the milk. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to say, we're getting out of here right now. He looks around and he's like, "Okay, wait, what? What's going on? To be perfectly honest, I don't know what, but it's bad. We need to get out of here. Cool. Are you pulling him out the front door, out the like side door? Where are you heading out? Probably if there's a side door, we're going to take that to do our best to sneak out of there. Cool. As you uh, get out of the side door, you notice a bunch of villains, like, walking at various speeds. Most of them are pretty slow, but some of them are moving a little bit faster. Some are heading towards the lake, and some are heading uh, in a different direction. The astute readers will realize that they're heading towards Herman's house. But you don't know that. You just know that there's some heading towards the lake, and some heading in a different direction. Where are you heading? I'd say my first goal is that I'm heading where, wherever I can go to get Calvin out of the situation. And then if time permits, I will come back and try to figure out what the hell is going on. Cool. So you're heading like towards the front gate to like get him out? Yes. Excellent. I'm going to say, because you got the like exceptional mobility, uh, I'm going to say that's an unleashing your powers. So go ahead and roll plus freak. Okay. So that's a five. Go ahead and mark potential. You got it. 
Great. As you're running, you like are passing like, I'm not going to say it's an alleyway because it's very suburby. There's a set couple stairs that you have to like go through this hedge and down a couple stairs. And as you like make it just to the bottom, a hand reaches out from the hedge and grabs Calvin by like the scruff of the neck and just like pulls him backwards. Can I see who it is at all or is it just a hand? You can see who it is. It's Lady Rose. Lady Rose was a supervillain. Silver Era, she's a little bit young to be living in this uh, retirement community. She's probably like early 60s, who has control of plants. And also notably can like turn into plants and like turn out of plants. And so she like, her arm emerges from the hedge. And then like, you see her face like made out of like thorns and leaves inside the hedge. And it just like smiles at you and is like, I'm so sorry. I just got to grab your friend for a second. And then she turns human and just starts like yanking Calvin back. Wait, wait, who do you think that is? She turns and she's like, or she, I don't think she says anything. I think mm, if you want her to stop and respond, you can provoke her to respond. Yes, because I'm going to try to pull a Janice move if I can. Oh, cool. What's the Janice move? Mild mannered. When you try to use your civilian identity to deceive, trick, or slip past somebody, roll plus mundane. On a hit, oh. they buy your facade. Cool. Go ahead and roll plus mundane. All right. Hell That's yeah. 12. She turns back and she's like, darling, we've got to get the superheroes over to the timekeeper. We've got to make sure that everyone is um, appropriately taken care of. And then she looks at you and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I thought you were, you're not a superhero. Huh. But timekeeper said that only superheroes would be here tonight. And she looks really confused and it gives a moment and she like looks around and she's like, I, I don't, um. I th- ma'am, I think you're mistaken. We're Todd and Tara Smith. We were just caught up in all of this. We're just trying to get home to our parents. She looks at you and she's like, I, Hold on. And she, like, pulls out, like, a cell phone and, like, starts dialing. And in that moment, Calvin, like, breaks free of her and runs towards you. And Calvin's yeah, like, go, go, oh. go, 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 go. Uh, you get to the gate, which is closed. Uh, and Calvin punches in the code and it slowly starts to open. As it slowly starts to open, a few pretty generic looking adult, geriatric adults, uh, make their way out of the surrounding areas and start heading towards you. And we're going to jump back to Al. So Blue Samurai, you just cut that portal open and you got pulled through. And now it's raining like hot metal from the sky. Timekeeper kind of snarls. He's significantly younger than he was 13 seconds ago. Not like a child, but he's like probably looks like he's like mid 40s now. And he's like, no, that's not how it's supposed to go. I'm gonna, I need to think of a really cool like pun. Uh, uh, shit. This is in character, by the way. <laughs> I just, it's Al with his hands on his hips, like, shit, I need something clever. Uh, uh. As you're thinking, he moves way quicker than a person should be able to. And he's suddenly, like, right behind you. And he, like, grabs you by the hair. I'm going to do something really cool and just cut my hair off with the sword and then turn around and swing at him. That's great. Go ahead and roll to directly engage a threat. Hell yeah. Cool. On a seven to nine, you can pick one. That was a seven. So on a seven to nine, you can pick one. I want to, uh, I want to take something from him. Okay, what would you like to take from him? His hand. Gruesome. All right, sure. So, so like, what I what I imagine is I reach up and as I cut my hair off, ow, I'm I'm grabbing his wrist instead of like my hair. I'm gonna cut my hair off, and then hold him by the wrist still chop the hand off, and then kick him back through the portal. Uh, and then jump back through the portal after him. Cool. You cut off his hand, and he, like, howls in pain. And then you kick him through the portal. And then as you're jumping through, suddenly you feel your body reversing. Like, you're moving forward, and then you reverse. And then you're standing on the other side of the portal. In the bad zone still? Yep, in the bad zone still. Shit. Um. <laughs> and he looks at you, and he's like, time's almost up. And you can see the portal closing very, very quickly. Oh, shit. I'm going to throw a throwing star through the portal at him as if I'm trying to hit him with it. Mm -hmm. And then just fall. And like, instead of the throwing star hitting him, I want to fall through a portal and just appear right in front of him, like on top of him, ready to just punch him. Cool. Go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. 
All right, that was a 10, so you do it. I'm uh, a real boy. <laughs> yeah, so you pop through the portal and, like, land on top of him. And as you do, you see Max and Amber starting to, like, stir ever so slightly. Because Squire is, like, by their faces, just slapping the hell out of them. <laughs> Good. I'm going to sit with both of my knees on this guy's shoulders and just, like like sword ready and just be like why are you doing this i thought you were gonna help us he looks at all of you and he says you don't know what it's like to get old to feel your body withering we couldn't do that anymore i'd rather break the timeline and be young again you're a time wizard you can live forever but at what cost you don't know what it's like for your body to crack every time you move you don't know what it's like to feel your body falling apart. Can I stay alive forever? Yes. But I want youth. And the only way to get that is to take it from the young. And then he's going to reach up and grab your wrist with his one remaining hand. And he's going to try to throw you off him. That moment, we're going to jump over to Machina and Rascal King. Machina and Rascal King, we see like a reverse of that same uh, panel from earlier of the like, it's mostly dark, and you see Al on top of the timekeeper. And then it gets a little bit brighter and a little bit brighter until you're seeing the scene as it is, right as the timekeeper grabs his wrist and like starts to throw him forward. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to like scramble to my feet, grab Squire, Spinner, and launch her at the timekeeper. Cool. What are you trying to do with that? Like, What's your intention? I'm trying to draw his attention away from Al. Cool. Uh, go ahead and roll to defend. Cool. On a 7 to 9, it costs you. Expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. And then uh, you choose one from the list there. I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to clear condition and I'm going to escalate the situation. Cool. So Squire hits the timekeeper's arm as his hand is like reaching up to grab Al's arm. And kind of like knocks him to the side. And then the timekeeper gives a sharp whistle. And four identical adults probably in their like early 70s appear in the yard that is as you remember mirror glaze uh mirror glaze was a villain in the the early gold era who could replicate himself a bunch of times and he appears and all four of him crack their knuckles and then just like run towards you and machina now that everyone's awake, let's go ahead and enter battle against a dangerous foe. So uh, who is our leader in this situation? I <laughs> feel like I am, because I've been awake the whole time. I'm going to actually let him have that one. Yes! Oh! Ooh. <clears throat> I'm glad, because I was going to agree with Al. Cool. Does the leader have influence over everyone in the team? Correct. Cool. So that's an extra team there. So we're at five now. Al, what is your purpose in this fight? To protect my friends and hopefully convince this douche canoe to send us back in time for mocking his stupid boyfriend. Cool. Rascal King, what's your uh, goal in this fight? Uh, I think about the same, but probably those priorities flipped to like, I think my primary priority is to make sure the time wizard's going to help us. I think I'm the same as Max. Cool. I'm going to say that probably doesn't count. Because uh, I think that primary goal is different. I'd like to point out the team leader can take a condition to stop us from losing a team. <laughs> he's never gonna mark a condition that's gonna you be wanted this responsibility take it <laughs> <laughs> does any member mistrust the leader or the team or anyone on the team i trust nope. him and i do think you probably are ill prepared or off balance i'm gonna take yeah, a condition okay. okay i'm gonna take angry cool so that puts us at five team there all right machina so what air glazes just launched himself towards you what do you want to do what's the positioning of the timekeeper and al they're probably about 15 feet in front of you, like, down off the porch in the front yard. I mean, like, what are they, are they standing? What, what, what does that fight look like? I believe that currently Blue Samurai is on top of his shoulders, correct? Cool. Yeah, my knees are pinning his shoulders down. Yeah, so he's on the ground. Is Timekeeper still trying to attack him? Yeah. Cool, I'm rushing at Timekeeper. We gotta get... Cool. As you like get to go get off the porch, two of the mirror glazes are in front of you, and they like go to grab at you. Gonna try to dodge that. You just like dodge, ducking out of their hands. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm trying to book it towards timekeeper. 
cool. Also, you, you're able to like dodge out of the way. And then you're in your costume, right? Yes. You feel your costume start to like pull off the ground, almost like you're being anti-grav, anti-graved, but like it's very clearly magnetic because your like systems start to like react a little bit. Oh shit. And you were lifted in the air by Magneton. Magneton was a hero from the cold era, blah, 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 who is standing on Timekeeper's porch. And he's like holding out his hand and lifting you up in the air. Wait, he's a hero? He's a villain, sorry. Okay. Uh, Then I might have to change directions and go after him. Cool. Uh, You are currently floating in the air, so I'm going to say it's Max's turn. Max, what do you want to do? Where is Magneton? Not far from you. He's on the porch with you. What do I know about him? Is he a person I can just punch? I mean, currently he's not wearing any armor. Actually, I want to look around the porch. Is there anything on the porch I can use? Uh, There's a flower pot. There's a wicker chair. Oh yeah, I'm going to hit him in the head with that flower pot. Cool. Go ahead and directly engage. All right. So that's an 11. So on a 10 plus pick two. I'd like to resist or avoid their blows and take Machina from them. Cool. He's not even looking at you and you just hit him with a flower pot and he drops. And as he drops, Machina also drops. And Machina lands on two of the mirror glazes. And they both, like, poof out of existence. And the one mirror glaze, which is clearly the real one we now see, is like, oh, that hurts more than it used to. The real one? One of the ones that I fell on top of? No, there was another one. Okay. Um, You can, like, clearly feel the pain of the clones. Okay. Can I fire off a quick text message? Yeah. To Vixen? Sure. I think the contents of the message is going to be... I need dirt on the time wizard, something for him to get him to cooperate. I promise I'll owe you. Almost immediately, you get a text back and it's time wizard question mark. I'm going to sigh, put my phone in my pocket and start running towards the battle. I'm just saying it wasn't, his name is the timekeeper. Well, I don't pay attention. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) Um, I've been constantly calling him the time wizard. Of course, he's going to think it's the time wizard. That's fair. All right. And I think we get a panel of the two of you, uh, Machina and Rascal King, like standing over Blue Samurai's shoulders from like the perspective of the timekeeper on the ground. So we see like Blue Samurai in the middle and then each of you standing over his shoulders. Uh, and we're going to jump out of that scene. The gate is very slowly opening as uh, Lucy and Calvin are standing there. And this like, Small horde of geriatric supervillains are heading towards you. What do you do? Is it open enough for us to get through? It's probably open enough for one of you to get through. Yeah, I'm pushing Calvin through and trying to follow behind as soon as I possibly can. He looks at you and he's like, wait, no. And as he gets pushed through, you see one of the supervillains press a button on the gate. And it starts going in the opposite direction and starts closing. Is this a gate that I can climb? Uh, I mean, it's metal bars, but yeah, probably. I'm going to try to do that. Cool, go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. That's plus freak. That's a seven. So on a seven to nine, you can either mark a condition or I'll tell you how it's unstable or temporary. Tell me how it's unstable or temporary. So I think you like go to grab onto the bars and you've got your exceptional mobility. So you go to like pull yourself up and I think you just like launch yourself into the air. Like this is way faster and way stronger than a human should be. And you, like, make it out of the gate and land next to Calvin. And Calvin's eyes are just so wide. I'm going to get up and start running. Be like, come on, we got to get a taxi out of here. And I'm just going to pretend like that didn't happen. As you're running, he's, like, running behind you. But you were faster than the average human. Uh, I would like to know how the scene in Spider-Man when he's got to, like, very gently open the doorknob or, like, dash on The Incredibles where it's sort of like, it's like second place level running for most of the time when she's around civilians and she's, like, quote unquote, sprinting at a civilian level. She's, like, jogging. She hasn't been truly sprinting. Cool. So he's, like, still not quite catching up to you, but he's, like, just behind you and he's, like, wait, are you a super? I don't know what you're talking about. Keep moving. He stops and he's, like. Wait, but they said that people are in trouble. Is there, is there a cab nearby? Yeah, there's probably a cab nearby. We're going to hail that cab. We're getting in that cab. Are you all both getting in that cab? Yes, I have a plan. Okay, cool. Uh, a cab pulls up and stops. There's a uh, cape, not a superhero or supervillain, just like a superpowered person who like their superpowers that they can sense when people need rides places. And Hell like, yeah. They they call themselves the transport uh, the transport artists 
and the transport artist like always just like arrives when you need them and they're like all right kids hop on in i'm gonna give the the transporter um calvin's out address and we're just gonna go there cool how long do do we think it takes to get there oh you're only like six blocks away so not far or not long cool so we're we're, we, we get there pretty soon and like i feel like calvin gets out to leave but she doesn't she stays in the cab Uh, And he turns back and he's like, wait, what, where are you going? I'm going to take the cab back to my place. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll see you at school later. Okay. And he's like, wait, but I have so many quests and the door closes and the car pulls off. And she's going to hand the driver an extra 10 bucks be and say, take me back to where we just were. And then she's going to pull up the partition and you best believe she's going to costume change like Mia Thermopolis in the back of the car. Phenomenal. And I think the next panel we see is the taxi pulling away. And as the taxi pulls away, we see Lucy in her costume standing in front of the gate. And I'm going to try to figure out where everybody is going. Cool. Yeah. So there, it seems like there's two big groups of people. There's a group of villains on like the lake bed who are fighting off Poseidon. And then there's a group heading towards like somewhere closer to the center of the complex. I'm going to follow them the ones going towards the center of the complex. I think Poseidon's going to be fine. As you get to the center of the complex, you arrive just as Machina, like, falls from the magnetized position and lands on the ground. And you see your three friends and Squire just as they, like, stand over the timekeeper on the ground. And we see that same panel of all of them, like, standing over him. And then they all look up in unison and they see you standing there in costume. Hey, guys. Can I roll to, like, make a connection in my head? The fact that we saw her heading here earlier, and now Flyby's here, and the last time we were with Flyby, Flyby suddenly vanished, and Lucy was there. Cool. So, uh, if you want to pierce her mask, you could. You could roll to pierce her mask right now. I'm gonna do that. (laughs) Woo. Alright, mark potential. Flyby, you see him give you a look, and he's, like, very closely peering at you, and then the timekeeper just, like, kicks him like way more agility than an old man should have like swings his leg around just like kicks him on the side of the face and knocks him sprawling i'm attacking timekeeper now Uh uh-uh he's not allowed to do that cool uh what are you doing to attack him is he like lying on the ground what's he doing he kind of just like did a roundhouse kick from the ground and he's like getting him back up he's like on like a three-point stance right now i'm like slamming him straight in the chest to knock him over Cool, go ahead and roll to directly engage a threat. I would just like to say that this is probably the first time in a long time that I've rolled this, and my danger is not at a three. All right, on a um, seven to nine, that was a seven, so on a seven to nine, pick one. I want to create an opportunity for my allies. Great, we'll get to that opportunity in just one second. You hit him in the chest, and he, like, falls backwards, and then he laughs, and with, again, way more agility than an old man should have, is suddenly leaping up, and he grabs you by the face. Go ahead and roll to take a powerful blow for me. During this panel, can we get, like, the flash of Max's camera going off? I want to take a picture of his face. Yep, absolutely. All right, that's a six. So, Mark, uh, Mark, how do you weather the blow? I'm going to draw on, like, my small amount of inner electricity and shock him. Cool, so his hand, like, hits your face, and there's just, like, static shock. And he, like, bounces back, and he's like, Oh, I hate young superheroes. Can I toss uh, something in there? Yeah. Can I be taking the picture by like sticking my phone near them and we get Machina drawing energy off my phone as well? Yep. We watch the battery on your phone drain. Not all the way, just like a little bit. We see like the snapshot of his face. And then he says, he's a little bit younger than he was. He's not significantly, but he's a few less wrinkles than he had a second ago. And he's like, ugh, you damn millennials and your phones. And then he, like, swings his foot at Max. We're Gen Z! <laughs> uh, Max, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to try to just, like, jump backwards out of the way. Cool, you can easily do that. And I'm going to shoot the picture with another text to Vixen that just is all caps and just says, Time Wizard, with, like, 12 exclamation points in his face. Perfect. We'll give you a response to that in a second. Flyby, uh, what do you want to do? I want to assess the situation. Cool, go ahead and roll plus superior great yeah, but which that, way is up that's almost impressive <laughs> that is impressive that was a two so mark potential as the four as you like come into picture and like are looking around there's a 
instead of like three or like three sets of hands like suddenly grab you by the shoulders and like push you and you end up kind of in a pile with the other three heroes and like all four of you and squire are all like standing together and the timekeeper puts out his hands and he says oh his hand you're right he lost a hand uh he puts out his hand and he says well it wasn't quite time for this but okay the fourth one is here and he puts his hand out and the entire area around you starts to ripple and you watch as like the world kind of fades to black around this bubble around you and you all crash land in a grove of trees as it's starting to fade away can we get a panel of machina going wait how do we and then once we end up in the grove of trees we get the follow-up of get back Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Hugh, and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at IcyNewYear or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. She can be found at T. Huth Playwright on Twitter or T.P. Huth 94 on Instagram. Cataclysm Crew is GM'd by T.P. Huth. Flyby is played by Jane Barry. You can find her at Jane-Tarzan on Twitter. Rascal King is played by me, Anthony Sheets. Machina is played by Elliot Peterson. She can be found at Elliot Yulin on Instagram. Blue Samurai is played by William Hendry. You can find him on Twitter at RockoutWill321 or at, on Steam as Cypress underscore Grunham. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at Beastly.Doodles or at Patreon.com slash Beautiful Beasties. The music of this issue is Mistake the Getaway by Kevin McLeod. A link to his website and the license will be in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please leave us a review on iTunes and tell a friend. Word of mouth and five-star reviews are really the best way for us to keep bringing these stories to more people. If you'd like to support us financially, check us out on patreon.com slash moonharborheroes. Supporting us there will give you access to bonus episodes each month. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.